realairculture.com canola school is brought to you by Syngenta Crop Protection Canada. In your mind, in, in you know the, the the data and the research that you've done, if you were to to guess or estimate. Do you think that it will be better this year based on the conditions we've had to be doing fall application of fertilizer or will we be be doing a lot more spring this year? Well, just because of our situation, uh, a lot of crop will not even be off by uh, even the middle of October. Here we are the 7th of October and we're not even 50% combined in southern Alberta. And normally this time of the year we'd be about, uh, about 98% combined. So it's very unusual. So that that's going to be a restriction, just getting the crop off. Uh, before freeze up is going to be a bit of a challenge. So it's not going to be much of a window of opportunity to put on a fertilizer. Um, so I guess the other thing I would, I would look at if you do want to fertilize this fall, um, what should you put on, when should you put it on, and uh, is it a wise idea to put it on this fall depending on, on your conditions. Well, for potassium uh, and um, for phosphorus, things don't change much from year to year. I'm a real big fan of putting that phosphate on either with the seed or near the seed at a time of seeding. So I would not put phosphorus on now. Some people do, they'll, uh, they'll um, uh, kind of go to a, a double shoot system and um, uh, or um, they'll band the nitrogen and the phosphorus uh, at the same time in the fall. I prefer to see that phosphate placed with or near the seed for rapid uptake at the time of germination in the spring. Um, most guys don't need to put on potassium, but there's maybe 20% of the land across Western Canada might need it, but I'd be inclined to side band that at the time of hmm. seeding as well. So it's right close to the seedling uh, for rapid uptake. So then that really leaves um, sulfur and nitrogen. Uh, for sulfur, if you're on, on deficient land uh, and you want to put some sulfur on now, one of the things you could do uh, before freeze up, and probably the earlier you put it on or the earlier you can put it on in the fall, the better, would be elemental sulfur. Um, broadcasting it on, not incorporating it, leave it on the soil surface, let it go through, through the wetting and drying and freezing and thawing processes and fall over winter and then it could be worked in in the springtime or even just kind of worked in at the time of, of planting. But if you do have a sulfur, if your soil is, is deficient in sulfur right now, uh, odds are that elemental fertilizer application, sulfur application, will not correct your deficiency next year. So you can use it as a building program, but I'd still be looking at putting on a uh, significant or adequate amount of sulfate sulfur next spring at the time of seeding. Ross, in terms of uh, applying nitrogen in the fall versus the spring, what are some of the considerations? Well, for nitrogen, actually, I'm, I'm not opposed to putting nitrogen on in late fall, if you can. The reason I probably, in this year, I might be concerned about it is, if you were to put on nitrogen, say, now, uh, for example, if you had a fields that are available and you put nitrogen on now, so moisture conditions are fairly warm, when you put on that, say, urea, within a couple of weeks, most of that nitrogen with the warm conditions we have may have actually converted over to, to nitrate. And with our soil moisture conditions being very good, if you happen to get some wet conditions later this fall, or definitely wetter conditions in the spring after uh, the frost comes out of the ground and the, and the soils are, uh, are quite wet, then that process of denitri denitrification can start to take place where we have nitrate in the soil. The soils are basically full of water. The microbes in the soil need oxygen, but the soils are saturated or very wet, so their only source of oxygen is uh, dripping that oxygen off the nitrate and reducing it to nitrate and nitrous oxide, nitrous oxide to gas, and then you lose that nitrous oxide back to the air. So if you were to fertilize now, that fertilizer converts over to nitrate, then your potential error for denitrification can be, be considerable. Now normally, I don't get very concerned about that. In Say in the southern prairies, usually things are fairly dry, but our moisture conditions right now are very good. It would take very little moisture to raise conditions up to above uh, fuel capacity and maybe not to saturation, but to set those conditions up. So uh, if a farmer does want to fertilize this fall, I would say you want to do it as late as possible uh, before a freeze up. And if you can put on urea or anhydrous ammonia as late as possible in the fall, then that fertilizer goes down as urea or, or ammonia, and then it'll basically just convert over to that ammonium, ammonium form. It won't leach, it won't volatilize, and it'll stay in that form until spring and then in the spring, as the soils warm up, then it'll gradually convert over uh, to nitrate. So if you want to minimize your losses uh, with any potential denitrification or leaching, you have to, if you're gonna fertilize this fall, do it as absolutely as late as possible. Some or, guys some guys get to be a bit of an eager beaver and go out there right now and yep. they may be hurting themselves. And, and in a, and it, if conditions were fairly dry, I wouldn't be the least bit concerned about- Well, lots uh, of moisture. I, I, uh, to put your nitrogen fertilizer on in the second or third week of October when soil conditions are relatively dry, Normally I wouldn't be worried about it, but the conditions this year are much different than normal, so then we have to kind of 
look at uh, logic and reason and risk and then decide is that really a, a wise thing to do. So we've talked about the fall, what about the spring? So then the, your next option then is to put that fertilizer on in the spring and even even in the spring when you do when you do seed and you put say for example you put your fertilizer down at the time of seeding next spring well we know we've got great moisture conditions now that means odds are we're going to have great moisture conditions in the spring what happens is we have a wet spring and uh, if you have a wet spring you put your fertilizer on and you seed um, uh, either before you put your fertilizer on either before you seed or at the time of seeding uh, things are, are warm that fertilizer converts over and we get to a fairly wet spring well then again we're set up for potential for denitrification so how can we minimize that um, you can use something like uh, agrotain and put that in with your liquid fertilizer or coat your uh, urea that only gives you fairly short term protection only for you know uh, 10 days to, to, to two weeks of protection so not a lot in terms of slowing that fertilizer conversion over to nitrate the other choice would be to go to something like uh, ESN environmentally smart nitrogen that uh, polymer coated urea it's a great product it works very well and then that's going to slow that nitrogen release down for you know about half that fertilizer would release in about 30 days and really by about 50 to 60 days and all of that fertilizer would release so that, that gives you protection over that april uh, that uh, may and june period or a fair amount of protection so then that would reduce your risks of denitrification so are, the, are those products more spring products or can you use them in the fall too you can certainly use them in the fall like i'd certainly recommend using them with winter wheat in the fall uh i probably wouldn't do it uh like you can fertilize in late fall, that's it was just for urea, that's probably what I would do. But if you want to reduce your risk in the spring, you can certainly look at ESN. Now having said that, I'm a, I'm a fan of ESN. I think there's, so there are definitely places for it. But um, the price for ESN now has jumped up uh, considerably. You know, uh, ESN uh, is probably in that range of $500 a metric ton, whereas for urea is about $300 a metric ton. So that's about a 20 cent a pound difference. So mm -hmm. if it was five or 10 cents a pound difference, uh, I would maybe be looking at that maybe that's a, uh, a way you can go but at 20 cents a pound that's a huge difference so then you have to ask yourself from an economic standpoint is it what is your risk and what is the benefit of, of, uh, of um, having that ESN pay for it. So Ross if you were going out uh, if you were out farming and you were going to plant canola knowing what we know for the information this year would you be fall fertilizing this year or would you be waiting till the spring? Um, I would kind of see how things shape up uh, during the month of October and if uh, moisture conditions weren't bad, things are really cooling off and it uh, looks like we're going to, like the forecast now was we're going to, with uh, El Nino or I forget how you say that word. <laughs> one but, of those, uh, they, what yeah, whichever yeah. one it is. El Nino or El Nino. They're, they're forecasting a long cold winter. Of course they forecasted a, a hot dry summer. So yeah, still waiting for that. Yeah, yeah, we're still waiting. It's happening in October. <laughs> but if we, if there's an opportunity to put some uh, and hires down uh, banded in, in very late fall, I would certainly consider it. Um, but you know, I'd also look at the areas of the province I'm in. You know, if I'm in southern Alberta where we don't tend to have wet springs, uh, I may be looking at it. If I'm in central Alberta, central Saskatchewan, where they tend to sometimes have uh, wetter springs, um, I might look at not putting that fertilizer on and then waiting and putting that fertilizer down at the time of seeding. And I would also look hard at the price of ESN. If ESN prices are in that uh, five cents to ten cents a pound over urea, uh, and you have very good moisture conditions. I might be inclined to put on somewhere between 50% and 70% of my nitrogen down as ESN, the rest as um, as urea, and that would help to protect yourself from any potential losses if we do run into a, a wet spring like we had. Thanks, Mark.